Welcome back, y'all. My next guest is about encouraging kids to get messy and silly at home, all in the name of science. She's a chemistry professor and the author of Kate the Chemist, The Big Book of Experiments. Let's get her in here and get the experimenting going. Hi, Kate. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm so good. Um, I am so excited that you're here. So I, I, I first want to ask, like, how did you, how did science come into your life? I'm just curious. Um, I think I've always been a little bit of a scientist, but my mom was super nice to me and let me throw shampoo and conditioner and everything in a big bowl. Um, but it wasn't until I was 15 years old in my sophomore year of high school when I had this incredible teacher and she just made me fall in love with chemistry. She was just passionate and wonderful and I love her for that. Yeah, that's a testament of a great teacher and how it yeah. can completely change the course of your life. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, well, okay, so you wrote this book before people like started quarantining, right? So this is just great happenstance for you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I don't want to use the word lucky or anything like that because yeah. that's the wrong thing, but it is a bit fortunate because I travel across the U.S. and do experiments for kids all the time. I'm blowing stuff up, and so I'm in L.A. and New York, but I'm also in smaller cities like Newton, Iowa, or Roswell, New Mexico, and yeah. so it was really important to me to make sure that no matter what experiment is here, that all the materials are available no matter what your socioeconomic status is. So these things you probably have in your pantry or your craft drawer. Um, you might need to get one or two things like dry ice, but besides that, you probably have it in your house. <laughs> you have a couple experiments for us, right? I do. Yeah, I'm so excited. This is this first one is called dry ice bubbles. So what you need for this one is a three liter soda bottle and you're going to fill it half up with water. Um, and then what you're going to do is make sure you throw on a glove or two and you're going to use some dry ice. So you're going to put the dry ice into the water just like this. Can you see it, hopefully? No, and yeah, it just looks like that's not water. It looks like it's dark colored. Exactly. So I have spiked it with something called Universal Indicator. And as the dry ice goes in, the pH drops. So it went from that purple color. Now hopefully you can see the blue and then the yellow. Isn't that cool? Oh my God, my kids would freak out. Universal Indicator, you can buy it on like an Amazon store. It's relatively inexpensive and it's super easy to use. Yeah, just don't eat it. Don't let them uh, take that because one of them uh, will... Well, just don't do it. It'll, it'll give you bad stuff. <laughs> so then what you do is you're going to funnel the gas. So we've had some sublimation here. And so what's happening is the dry ice, the solid carbon dioxide, is turning into gaseous carbon dioxide. Yeah. And so you're going to let this gas come out, put it into a bubble bath solution, and then you can form these dry ice bubbles where if you pop them... Oh, my gosh! You know, so is that just like a bubble, like a bubble bath thing? Bubble bath solution, yeah, exactly. So some people use soapy water, and so any dish soap would work as well. But honestly, you want bubble bath solution, something that's viscous. Think like molasses type of texture. That's what you're looking yeah. for. I love that it looks like a Guns N' Roses music video with all that steam going on, that fog. It's I want to fill my whole house with that. Right. You can catch it too sometimes. Wow. Really cool. Oh, and look at that. This is nice and orange now too. It keeps changing. That's, so why does it keep changing? What is that? How does that happen? So the, the thing inside of it is called universal indicator, and there's six different indicators or different molecules in there, and they're oh. sensitive to different things. So as the pH drops, each one gets its time to shine, and right now we've got the orange one saying hi. That is so cool. So in this next experiment, you're breathing fire, right? Yeah, that is correct. <laughs> okay, well, show us how it's done because I'm excited. Okay, first things first, do not do this at home. My lawyer made sure I said that. Okay, so now we can go. <laughs> Um, so the first thing you're going to do is I'm going to take some cornstarch, I'm going to put it in my mouth, and then I'm going to spit it over a blowtorch, and hopefully you guys can see it with the contrast of the leaves behind us. So. Oh my gosh, okay. Okay, so here we go. Got some fire. cornstarch. Okay. That just, oh, I don't know if I can do that. What? You're like a dragon! <laughs> that is amazing! So you just, okay, Thank yeah. You. yeah. Definitely kids, don't try that, or adults, try that at home. <laughs> no, definitely adults. It's more the adults I have to talk to. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. So wait, explain why that happens. Why the cornstarch, and now I feel like we shouldn't eat anything with cornstarch in it, but go ahead. <laughs> no, yeah, you definitely don't want to do this. It tastes disgusting. I've had to train myself how to eat a mouthful of cornstarch because it like sucks the moisture out of your mouth. Um, but it's a simple combustion reaction. Cornstarch has a lot of carbon in it, and so the carbon just ignites. It reacts to the oxygen that I'm also spitting out, and then you just see the wonderful flame because I've turned myself into a dragon. It's so cool and very Khaleesi from Dragons with their uh, Game of Thrones. I like oh, it. You just made my day. Oh my, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm a fan as well. 
Hair <laughs> show amazing experience. I love it. Well, wait, before we go, you say that one of your biggest missions is to encourage diversity in science. And how, how do you think we should do that? Well, one of the things that I do is just try to talk to my students. I ask them, what can I do to help? Um, we've created a bold women in chemistry group here at the University of Texas, Hook em Horns. Yeah. Uh, so we're reaching out to all the women that are either undergrads or graduate students or even faculty members. And we're trying to build a mentorship. Then mm -hmm. we're also going out and doing outreach. I think outreach is one of the most important things you can do. Just talk to kids, see what they, they need, see what you can do to help. I I love chemistry, so that's my angle. So I use chemistry to try to play and, and build the diversity and bring more people excited about science, really. Yeah, and I think it's so important because I think more people get into science because of stuff like you just did. I know it seems fun, but it's like, wow, how does that, you see something awesome like that that maybe they create in films that you love and, and things like that, and you're like, how did they do that? And like to know how to do that is, is really incredible. I think it also excites children to get involved in science more, which we need exactly. more scientists. Thank you so much for just being awesome and coming on our show. And everybody, you gotta pick up Kate the Chemist, the big book of experiments wherever you get your book subscribe to my channel subscribe to my channel subscribe to my channel subscribe to my channel please don't make me keep going